Good morning, Lake Springs Church. So good to see you. After a month away with my wife, Vasti, thank you for making that possible. Thank you for the love and generosity of you, of the elders, of our pastor, Derek, that made that possible for us to go and delight in the Lord, delight in his gifts, delight in the good world that he has given us, delight in each other, and it has been a beautiful month for us. And it is my privilege, if you don't know me, if you're here for the first time, my name is David, and I help lead our music and tech teams, and together we get to lead the church, you, in worship. And it is a beautiful thing. I don't know if you felt like I felt as I was singing that last song, where we declare that in Christ alone we are complete. And my heart almost was bursting out, just declaring what God has done for me. And I hope that was the same for you. But together we lead you in worship every week, and it is such a joy. And today, it is my privilege to lead us into our last week of our Summer of Psalms. And we are today going to go through the first Psalm, Psalm 1, because all of the Psalms, as this Psalm will exemplify, are poems. It's a poetic literature in our Bible, and their intention is more than just give us information about God, because we can do that very easily with just prose, with a narrative, but the poetic Medita uh, meditation literature in our, our Bibles is there to give us an experience of God. It's using creative, dense creative language to give us an experience into who God is, to experience God's goodness, God's forgiveness, God's presence, and ultimately for Him to be with us and for us to be with Him in a virtual temple of His Word. Because being with God is what ultimately will transform us into the people that God created us to be. People that image who God is. So, Psalms are exactly that. The whole book of Psalms is a virtual temple for all exiles. All people that are living in a foreign land, waiting and hoping on the return of King Jesus and for his kingdom, the kingdom of God, to be established on earth. And that's what we are. Did you know that? We are not from here. We belong to a new kingdom. We belong to a new earth. We belong to a different king. And we're just here passing through. And while we're passing through, the book of Psalms help us to experience God in his virtual temple, in his word. So today, my hope is that you not only get a glimpse into the beauty that is Psalm 1, Maybe you already know that psalm by memory, but yet you also get a glimpse into the beautiful whole, the beautiful temple that is the whole poetic book of Psalms, as we hope for the arrival of King Jesus. So, I'm going to ask us to experience Psalm 1 together, as many generations have done before us, and what we're going to do is we're going to read this psalm together antiphonally, which means... I'm going to read the first verse, then you're going to read the second, then three, four, five, and then the last one we're going to read together. Does that sound good? All right. Would you mind standing for us to do that together? And we're going to see the words on screen so we all have the same translation, okay? And we're unified in our proclamation of this psalm together. So I'm going to start, then you go. Psalm 1. Blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked, or stand in the way that sinners take, or sit in the company of mockers. That person is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever they do prospers. Therefore, the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked leads to destruction. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. Did a great job. That was beautiful. Now, 
As we go through this psalm, I want to remind you that you can use your Bible or a Bible that's in front of you. The page number is up on the screen to follow along with us. You can also use one of our Bible journals or your own Bible journal. I love taking notes. I'm like a you know, a savant note taker, like I like making it beautiful and cool. So if that's you, that's cool. Take notes. So let's start at the beginning. Okay, so Psalm 1, the first word we find in this beautiful introduction to the whole book of Psalms is the word blessed. The word blessed. Now, in this specific instance, the word that is used by the biblical author, the Hebrew original word is ashray. The word ashray in the Hebrew language is a wisdom word, and it refers specifically to the way people in the ancient world used to describe a person who is living the good life. So if a person is living the good life in the ancient world, people would say, that person is ashray, is living the good life. And we all can have many different definitions of what that looks like, right? A blessed life, a good life. Because the word blessed or ashray can mean different things to different people depending on our personalities, what we like, what we dislike, what looks like for us might, might differ from others. In fact, what I want us to do right now for a moment is to daydream a little, okay? So please, close your eyes with me for a moment, just where that, right there where you are, and imagine, try to picture what the good life looks like for you. Maybe it's being on a beach somewhere with no work responsibilities or bills to pay or children to feed. Go ahead, daydream a little. Maybe it's being around your family, just delighting in them around a meal. Maybe it's traveling the world and meeting new people. Or maybe it looks more like being by yourself in a solitary place reading a good book that is a series that never ends. Whatever it is, just picture that in your mind and picture what the good life looks like like for you. So, the word ashray describes that life that you are thinking of. Now, I hate to bring you back to reality, but I promise it'll be worth it. Some of you were just enjoying that a little too much, maybe. <laughs> but the blessings that lead to that kind of life that you just imagined, that you just thought through, the kind of blessings that lead to that come from God. Whatever it was, all of those blessings come from God. And the word blessing for this kind of blessing that comes from God is the word Baruch. Baruch means simply a blessing from God. A blessing from God. So the first thing I want you to see in this psalm is that the psalmist is not pronouncing a blessing over the reader, but rather the author is using the word Ashray to describe a state of blessing or the kind of good life that a person who is living with God is having. So the word used in this psalm is describing the good life according to God. In other words, Psalm 1 is a description of someone who is living in a state of blessing, living the kind of life that leads to God's definition of good life. It's the same word that Jesus for example, uses in the Beatitudes in Matthew chapter 5 through 7. In chapter 5, he goes through and says, blessed is the one, blessed is the one. He's saying the ashray life looks like this. And the psalmist in Psalm 1 is doing the same thing. And when he does that, and throughout the words that we're going to see, he's describing Jesus himself. In fact, in, Psalm, in Matthew 5, you will see Jesus describing the kind of life that he lived. The kind of life that Jesus himself lived. So Psalm, was, psalm 1 is a prophetic psalm pointing us toward a future Messiah, future king. So let's read verse 1 again. Blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked or stand in the way that sinners take or sit in the company of mockers, but whose delight is in the law of the Lord and who meditates on his law day and night. Now, for those of you who come to our summer Wednesdays, which I encourage you to do because we learn a lot together and we meditate in these things together, you will recognize 
these two lines as a poetic couplet. That is how the poets in the Hebrew language arrange their poetry, by couplets. And so you will recognize that this couplet is contrasting two sets of ways of life. First, we get the way of life that is not Asherah, right? A person who walks, stands, sits with the wicked, with those who do evil. And notice this language, it's very important. The person who walks, stands, sits. This is relational language. This is a person who is intentionally trying to be relating to those who do these things. And then we get the kind of life, the way of life that is astray, that is blessed by God. A person who delights in the way of life of God, described in the law, described in the Torah, and who meditates on this way of living day and night. In other words, someone who is thinking about God's ways day and night, all the time. And again, notice the language here is delighting. And this is the word that Vasti and I have had for this almost three months that we've been off Esperanza and this month that we've been off for Lake, from Lake Springs Church. And delighting is something that, yes, you can do by yourself, but you also complete it by sharing with others. Think about it. When you, if you remember the last time you delighted in you know, a vacation or in your family or in uh, good food or whatever, whatever you delighted in was your next conversation with that someone that you loved. You just couldn't wait to share all the beautiful things that you experienced. And as you shared, you went on your way and you remembered. And as you remembered, you delighted again. It's as if that memory was a delight in itself again. So delighting is a relational language as well. It's a relational thing that we do with others, that we do with God as well. And, and, and it's this relational language that God wants us to have with him. He wants us to delight in the same way that he described people who delight with the wicked. He wants us to delight with him in what? In walking with him, in standing with him, and in sitting with him, in being with him. And how do we do that? We do that by meditating, by sharing. That's what we do on summer Wednesdays. That's what you do in your life groups during the year, right? You share. You can't wait to do that. And the delight is completing that. That's why the Bible is a meditation type of literature. It requires walking, standing, and sitting so that we can be transformed by it. We cannot be transformed by the scriptures if we don't have an experience with God himself. We cannot be transformed with scriptures if all we have is knowledge. I could, I could know exactly what happens in the narrative of scriptures. I can know a lot of information about God. But if I am not experiencing by delighting, by thinking on, by sharing, by walking, standing, and sitting with him, by having an experience with him, I'm not going to be transformed by it. So, because we're memorizing scripture, right, throughout this uh, Summer of Psalm series, we're going to start memorizing Psalm 1. And don't be scared. We're gonna, not going to do the whole Psalm 1. Derek did the whole Psalm 23, which was very ambitious. But we're only going to do the first three verses of Psalm 1. So let's start with the first two. And I'm going to call your attention to a, a few words that are very key words. The first one, of course, is blessed. So let's uh, read it together. Ready? Blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked, or stand in the of sinners, stake, or sit in the company of mockers, but whose delight is in the law of the Lord, and who meditates on his law day and night. So before we take out some words, notice those important words. Blessed, walk, stand, sit, delight, and meditate. All right, here we go. Let's take out some words. Ready? Here we go. Blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked or stand in the way that sinners take or sit in the company of mockers, but whose delight is in the law of the Lord and who meditates in his law day and night. All right. Let's breathe in. More words. <laughs> Here we go. Blessed is the one who walks in step with the wicked, who does not, sorry. 
I got that completely wrong. <laughs> let's, do that. let's try that again, shall we? One, two, three. Blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked or stand in the way that sinners take or sit in the company of mockers, but whose delight is in the law of the Lord and who meditates on his law day and night. Okay, we got it. We did it. All right, last one. See if we can do it together. <laughs> and it's okay to cheat. You, it's it's to, totally okay. It's not a test. You can look down. Here we go. Blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked or stand in the way that sinners take or sit in the company of mockers but whose delight is in the law of the Lord and who meditates on his law day and night. Let's give ourselves a hand. There's 66% there. 66% there because we only have one more verse to memorize. That's Psalm 1, 1, and 2. And sometimes, actually, it's good to make a mistake. Did you see that huge mistake I made? Then now you, you, you know that the word that comes after blesses does not, right? <laughs> that helps. Okay. So, that's one and two. The next verse gives us now a poetic metaphor for us to picture in a descriptive, poetic way what the Asherah life looks like. So, it, 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 it's a picture of what the good life looks like. And it reads, That person is like a tree planted by streams of water who, which yields its fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither Whatever they do, prospers. Don't we like that last thing? Whatever they do, prospers. Now, here in North Carolina, we have four very distinct seasons, right? Right now, by the insane heat and the rain and the green, we are in summer. We're in the summer. And in spring and summer, we do expect trees to be flowering, to give us fruit, we expect all of those things, right? The beautiful foliage and the beautiful flowers and the green leaves. But imagine a tree that gives perpetual fruit. That's always giving fruit. Imagine a tree that defies the fall season. And instead of all the, trees, the, the leaves turning, I don't know if you've been to Asheville in that beautiful, uh, what is it called, that Blue Ridge, right? And you see all the different colors of the, of the leaves. Imagine one that defies it. No, I'm not going to do yellow and orange. And I'm going to be green. Right? And then continues on. In the winter, it's covering snow, and yet it is giving fruit and it's flowering. I think the other trees are going to definitely be talking about that tree. That tree is weird, <laughs> and that tree is not like us. And actually, that tree is living the ashray, the good life, because he's doing it every day no matter what happens no season it gives giving fruit keeps flowering and i love biblical metaphors because they are as deep as they're simple so what jesus does we can all make the connection right that the person who lives according to god's way is like this tree that gives god's fruit perpetually in all seasons of life and they will be looked upon and described as living an ashray life, living the kind of life that is baruched by God, that is being blessed by God. So what kind of fruit is God's fruit? Well, we have, not to wonder, we have the list in Galatians 5, chapter 5, verses 22 and 23. The list is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And notice this is a whole fruit. It's not fruits. It's one fruit that is being born through the people who live with the Holy Spirit. This is the kind of perpetual fruit that is available to all who are planted like trees by the waters of God's nourishing word, who walk in His way, who do not walk in step with the wicked, or stand in the way that sinners stay, or sit in the company of mockers. In other words, who choose to do the opposite, who delight in, God's, in God himself and experience him through a constant, continuous meditation in his word, through being with him. What do they do? These people show love when there's, they're being hated. These people have joy in the middle of the chaos of life. 
These people enjoy peace in the fiercest of storms and forbearance in the darkest of valleys. They are kind when others aren't to them or to those that they love. They fight for good when it's easier to be quiet and not do anything. They stand faithful when surrounded by unfaithfulness and are gentle when others are harsh and have self-control when it's easier to give in. But they don't produce that fruit. God is the one who produces that fruit. And it is through our being with him, through experiencing him, through nourishing in his waters of his word, and through delighting. That's the word. When delight comes into play, we're no longer doing something as a religious duty. We're not doing something as a, well, if I do this, I'm going to get this other thing. We're not going to do something for God because he's going to give us something in return. We're doing it because it delights us. You do it for the same way that some people go fishing. It's not attractive to me, but some people enjoy it, delight in it. We do it for the same peop- uh, reason that some people like certain foods. We do it for the same reason that you delight in your children. You're not made to, you love it. That is the kind of place, that is the kind of place where we need to be in order to produce the fruit that is not being forced upon us, but that is a produce of the delight that we have in God. And then, when we go and take care of others, when we take care of our world, when we do the things that God has put in front of us, the good words that he has put in front of us to walk in, whatever we do, prospers. 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 Not our plans, his plans. Not our ways, his ways. Not our goals, his goals. Not our fruit, his fruit prospers. All right, so let's memorize the last 33% of this verse. Ready? Let's start just reading the whole thing. One, two, three. That person is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season, and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever they do prospers. All right, let's take away some words. Ready? That person is like a tree planted by streams of water, which leaves its fruit season, and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever they do, prosper. Great. Now all of it. Let's do it. That person... Oh, not yet all of it. Sorry. Here we go. I'm giving you a little more. Here we go. That person is like a tree... Planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season, and whose leaf does not wither, whatever they do prospers. Whatever they do in this delighting state prospers. All right, here we go. All of it. That person is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season, and whose leaf does not wither, Whatever they do, it does. You guys are amazing. That's Psalm 1, 1 through 3. We are not going to memorize any more today, I promise. But we'll come back to those three verses at the end, all right? For now, remember, a person who lives a blessed life, a astray life, the good life according to God is like a tree planted by these waters, perpetually giving fruit, not withering, prospering in the ways of living of God. Now, this beautiful poem which is an introduction to the whole book of psalms continues in verse 4 with another metaphor we see another poetic contrast of the Israel life with the life of the wicked so verse 4 reads not so the wicked they don't prosper they are like chaff that the wind blows away and you can picture that i remember being little grabbing that blowing and seeing it go everywhere The ones who do not live according to the ways of God are like that chaff that the wind blows away. They might look pretty, might look attractive for a while, they might look cool, but it doesn't last. It just doesn't last. It can be blown just like in the Sermon of the Mount, like that house built on sand, blown away by the wind, by the wind of life. And because of that, the psalmist says in verse 5, therefore, 
The wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. The people who do not live according to God's ways of life will not stand in judgment with the righteous. They will not be able to lift their head high when judgment comes before the good judge. And this is another metaphor to help us remember. Because when we look around, we look at so much injustice, so much wickedness, so much wrong being told as the right thing, the good being called evil, evil being called good. The world is completely upside down. But we must remember the end of the story. And the end of the story is that we have a good judge and he will not forever suffer evil in this world. And one day, we see in the last book of the Bible, everyone will stand before a white throne and everyone will have to give account to the good judge of their life on earth. Finally, the psalmist in verse 6 says, For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked leads to destruction. Our most important or necessary human needs are physiological, right? What to eat, what to drink. Then our safety, our security, our stability in what we have. And then also our need of belonging, of love. And that is the state which psychologists call, for you that are in college, you're going to encounter this, self-actualization. Self-actualization. And that is exactly, guess what, what we find both at the beginning in Genesis and also at the end. In Genesis, we see, Genesis 1, we see people that have been given, humans have been given a temple garden. A beautiful place where God provides for their physiological needs, for their safety, their security, and when, where they are free to love each other and to belong with God to a purpose that is higher than themselves, a purpose of creating beauty with the raw materials that are around them and to rule over, over creation. And that's what we find at the beginning of the Bible in God's original version or vision of Creation. In his original design, God created a garden, a temple to be with them in which all human beings have everything that they need. That's how the Bible starts. And I want you to remember that every time you talk to an unbeliever or an unconvinced person or a person who is doubting, that's the best place to start as well. Because that is also the place where the Bible ends. That's how it ends with those who chose the way of life of the Creator, living the truly blessed life, self-actualized in safety, stability, abundance, purpose, with no pain, no corruption, no evil, no injustice, no wickedness. That's where we're headed. Isn't that something to be glad about, to delight in? That's the hope we proclaim every Sunday when someone stands on this platform. That's the hope we proclaim in song. That's the hope we proclaim with the good things that we get to do as a church to this community, to the people around us, to our family and friends. So Psalm 1 points us both back to the beginning of all things. It points us to the gospel, to Jesus himself, Jesus being that tree planted by streams of water, and it points us to the end of all things. It's a beautiful psalm. So let's finish by connecting all these dots real quick, okay? Here we go. Let's start with Genesis again. God gave humans this garden temple. It's a temple where his presence abides with creation. And he lived and walked among them in a beautiful relationship. When humans decided to be gods themselves and to define good and evil in our own terms, we are taken out of this beautiful temple garden. But God made a promise in Genesis 3, and he says that the descend, a descendant of this woman will crush the head of the power of the snake that has brought corruption, evil, sin, and death. So that humanity could once again be in the presence of God in that beautiful Eden garden temple. Now, I remember memorizing Psalm 1 as a child. I remember every night, my mom would bring my brother and I to bed, and we would recite this psalm, among others. But this one, I remember very clearly, and I memorized it, and I would imagine all of these things, just like a, a movie, the tree, the water, the chaff, and I wanted to be that person. But if I'm honest, 
I've had points in my now uh, long life, I won't say how many decades, uh, where I have walked in step with the wicked. I have stood in the way that sinners take. And I have sat in the company of mockers. More times that I care to admit. I failed to be that tree that I pictured when I was little. Planted in streams of nourishing waters. I have failed to give fruit in every season. I have failed to, to look at my leaves and see them. I have seen them withered. But that's where we all are, aren't we? But that's where the promised Messiah comes in. Jesus the message of the gospel, you see, is the good news of all scripture as a unified unit. And it is a promise that sin and death, that the separation between us and God caused by our wickedness, the separation that we cannot have the good life that Psalm 1 describes, that Genesis 1 describes, that Revelation describes, that that separation has been erased by the one called the Messiah. The Messiah promised in Psalm 1. This human who would be that tree of life. Who would be planted by the streams of ways of living of God. Who would live in fact a life according to God's law. Meditating on it. Delighting on it day and night. Never walking in step with the wicked. Never standing in the way of that sinner's take. Never sitting in the company of mockers. But delighting and sharing and Showing us the kind of life that is an ashray life. The kind of life that is a good life. And Jesus is that person. You can read about him in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. You can read the beautiful life that Jesus had and how he is an ashray example. An example of the good life according to God. And the next psalm, if you read Psalm 2, and I encourage you to do so because 1 and 2 are the introduction to this whole book of psalms. And he completes his introduction, the psalmist, by proclaiming this king who would come and conquer all injustice and bring wrong to right. So Psalm 2 ends, blessed, again, Ashrei are all who take refuge on him. And that is what I want us to remember and delight in today. Because blessed, Ashrei, are the ones who take refuge on this king, even when things are hard. We can live in that temple, in the temple of God's word, because Jesus has overcome. Jesus has shown us what it is in the day-to-day -to, -day to live this kind of life in the Gospels. Jesus is our high priest who gives us access to the temple of the word of God so that we may experience, rather than just know information about God, experience yada, the presence of God. And a temple is exactly that. It's a place where you experience community with God. And that is the purpose of the book of Psalms. It was written from beginning to end, not as a collection of many different poems, kind of disjointed, but very, very carefully curated to be a book where we see the whole story of Scripture. Now, I don't have time to go through all of that. I, I originally wanted to, but that took my sermon way longer. But you can go to Bible Project, uh, BibleProject.com and look at a video on this. It's so beautiful. But the whole book of Psalms is this summary of Scripture, and it serves as a virtual temple of the Ashray life, the good life. And so, when you and I fail, and we do and we will, we can experience going to God and experience His forgiveness by doing what? By praying Psalm 51, for example. And we have those coaches of prayer in the Psalms that will guide us through this experience of, of forgiveness through Psalm 51. When we go through hard times, which we will, Jesus promised it. He said, in this world you will have trouble. We can come to God in our pain, in our depression, in our suffering through a lament like Psalm 88, the one we started in, in the beginning of this summer, or Psalm 13. When we need comfort, we can go to Psalm 23. We can also go to Psalm 42 and pray that prayer with our prayer coaches that are helping us to experience God in, that, in those times. When we want to be with God, just to be with Him and experience it, we can go to Psalm 8, Psalm 139. 
when we're ready to praise and thank God for his goodness, his mercy, his faithfulness, we can go to Psalm 46, Psalm 136, or Psalm 150 and praise him and be thankful that all is conquered. And by reading and rereading these beautiful Psalms, book of Psalms, we're reminded of the ultimate plan of God to redeem his creation to the garden temple of Eden. So I encourage you, I encourage you to continue this meditation journey of the Psalms because we're ending this series now. That doesn't mean you need to end your experience of God, your delight in God through the Psalms. Because as you can probably see, I hope that you see, that Psalms isn't the kind of book that you just read once and put down. It's designed for a lifetime of slow reading and rereading and reflection and delight. These prayers and laments and songs of praise are meant to become our own. They're poems for exiles who are learning to live by God's wisdom and to seek God's justice in the world as we hope for the coming Messiah and the kingdom of God. So let's review our memorization verse. Are you ready? And we're going to end with that. All right. First, let's reread. Here we go. Blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked or stand in the way that sinners take or sit in the company of mockers, but whose delight is in the law of the Lord and who meditates on his law day and night. That person is like a tree planted by streams of water whose leaves is fruit in the season and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever they do prospers. Good job. You did it in spite of my English getting my tongue twisted. Here we go. This, you know that that happens? If you're a Spanish speaker, your tongue gets twisted when you get... Anyway. <laughs> Next verses. Here we go. Blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked or stand in the way that sinners take or sit in the company of mockers, but whose delight is in the law of the Lord and on his and who meditates on his law day and night. That person is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season, and whose leaf does not wither, whatever they do prospers. And finally, for the brave. And also you can cheat. <laughs> Blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked or stand in the way that sinners take or sit in the company of mockers, but whose delight is in the law of the Lord and who meditates on his law day and night. That person is like a tree planted by streams of water which yields its fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither, wither whatever they do Father we thank you for your word we thank you for the experience that we've just had together here it's a beautiful experience to delight in your word together and for a moment all of us were living the ashtray life for a moment we all of us we're living the kind of life that you called blessed. And God, we recognize that all blessings come from you. We recognize that all that we have that is good in our lives has, has come from you. From the breath in our lungs to our families, to our jobs, to uh, nature, to everything good that we will experience today and tomorrow and the next day and the next day if we have life. God, thank you. And I pray, God, that as we grow in age, we also grow in the experience of who you are. And that as exiles, as people living in a land that's not our own, awaiting your kingdom, God, that we can come whatever season of life we are going through to the Psalms. Go back through the prayers, the laments, the songs of praise to experience you with the help of our psalmist coaches in your fullness, in your goodness, your beauty, and in being with you to be transformed by your love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.